in the previous video we talked about why in environmental circumstances a market might fail. And we looked at resource depletion and resource degradation and the fact that some aspects of the environment are considered to be public goods. Therefore, there's a rationale for government intervention to solve such failures in the markets. Okay? We're going to look at two key ways in which the government can try and solve this market failure, one of which we've already covered. Uh, the two I'm not going to talk about, which can also be used, is indirect taxation and regulation. These are two things that were covered last year at AS. Those key points for and against are exactly the same as last year. So if you're not confident with those, go back to your notes, just have a read through that. Nothing has changed there, okay? They're still important to use though if you did get an essay on this. So do read up on those. Indirect taxation and regulation are still viable, but these two are extensions to what you did last year. So we talked a bit about allocating property rights, okay? By allocating property rights, uh, no matter who gets it, whatever party gets it, the market can make itself as efficient as possible so we can get quantity of pollution back to the Q-star level which is where society wants it to be just by allocating property rights. Um, this is great because it's a market solution and the externality is internalised and there's no need for command control methods uh, in place by the government. Okay? The market can solve itself, the most efficient way of doing so, but we know there are problems with that. Distribution of income concerns, equity concerns, information problems, the problems with assumptions, and we need the property rights to be well-defined, enforceable and things. And in the real world, that's not always the case. So that's exactly the same as what we've already covered. Tradable pollution permits is another good thing we can talk about here, and this is something that has been used in the real world, so something that's good for evaluation. So let's just consider those briefly as well, okay? So, tradable pollution permits. Let's just briefly understand what these are. So, tradable pollution permits, what happens is, the government decides to set a level of pollution that it wants in the economy. The way it gets to that level of pollution, the way it knows it's going to actually reduce pollution to that level, is by allocating tradable pollution permits to firms in that economy, allowing them to pollute up to a certain level. So, to keep it simple, each firm has the same number of permits, allowing them to pollute the same level. Uh, the reason that's good, well, you know straight away that pollution is going to come down because the fact that these permits are enforceable means that if a firm does go beyond that allowed pollution level, then they can be fined heavily. So you know pollution is going to come down. Seems like a great thing to do. Another great point behind pollution permits here is that they are tradable, and that's very important. Okay, So the fact that they are tradable solves a lot of the problems we have with regulation type methods. So the fact that they're tradable means that they're quite efficient because consider there's a firm that finds it very easy to reduce pollution um, down to the level that's allowed and there's a firm that finds it very difficult. Well the firm that finds it easy might actually reduce pollution more than what's allowed because it finds if, well, it found it very simple and it found it very cost effective to do so. Whereas a more expensive firm finds it very difficult. So the expensive firm can buy up permits from the firm that finds it very easy reduce, to reduce pollution. Therefore, both firms are kind of benefiting by the fact that there are these permits out there. So it's an efficient way of solving it. We're not putting a firm uh, in danger of you know, closing down or overburdening the firm with costs as a result of this uh, form of intervention. It seems like quite an efficient way of reducing pollution. Okay? So tradable pollution permits work like that. The fact that they're tradable is quite good. Used in the EU, Kyoto Protocol kind of brought these into, uh, into power, actually used in the market. But, as we always know, there are problems with such things as well. So, a key problem, again, is with information. The government can set the level of pollution allowed, but how does the government know what the optimal level is? How does the government know the level of pollution that society wants? Very difficult. And it, we kind of need perfect information for this to work perfectly, and we don't have that. All right? Another problem with this is that, well, we're creating a market. Okay? We're creating a market for permits which can fail. So if for some reason a firm manages to have loads and loads of permits, well then it has some degree of monopoly power and it can abuse that power by trying to sell them on at a very high price, a price higher than the market level. All right? So these are kind of key problems we have here as well. But going back to the good things, well we have created a market. By creating this market we're internalising the externality. 
by inter internalizing the externality, the market is solving the problem of the externality itself. And that's considered to be quite a nice thing um, for economists to, to consider, a nice thing um, to actually use to solve this problem of uh, market failure. All right, so let's just look at one final diagram. If you wanted to talk about pollution permits, you can use this diagram. Okay? So like I said, there's a market for pollution permits created, and the market looks like this. So very simply, we can have price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. Okay. Now, because the government is supplying the amount of permits, and that supply is fixed, we have a vertical supply curve, call that S1. We have a normal downward sloping demand curve for permits. And given that fixed supply, we have a price level for these permits at P and a quantity of these permits actually allocated at Q. The great thing is, if the government decides we actually want to reduce levels of pollution in the economy even further, it can just restrict the supply of permits. Okay, so shift the supply to the left to S2 which then raises the price to P2 and reducing the quantity of permits to Q2. Okay, so that is the market essentially. The government has control over the supply of permits in the market, but essentially the rest is down to the market. So by trading permits at given price levels, we can actually reach the optimum level of pollution in a market. Okay, so we've got two um, extended uh, forms of intervention, property rights, tradable pollution permits, alongside indirect taxation and regulation for you to consider. Next thing we look at is government failure. So by government intervention, can it actually work? Will it work successfully? Or will the government fail in trying to intervene?